Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD. In this lesson, we're going to go over some presentation and shop drawing tips to help you enhance the drawings that you submit to your customers and also send back to the shop. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to create a full-size drawing, which can be used for two things. It can be used as a demonstration drawing for your customer, which would have quite an impact, and also to help the shop speed up its fabrication process. So I've created a gate here from our AutoRail program and you'll notice that this gate would has a top and bottom channel. You know that the radius is going to be different for the bottom than it is for the top and the hole punching is going to be different top to bottom. So to speed up the actual fabrication of this I'm going to, there's a couple of ways to do it. We have a full size layout sheet here. This is 3 foot by 10 foot. I could go in here and create a viewport and scale it to 1 equals 1 and pan and do all that kind of stuff, but I just found it a whole lot easier just to physically copy this gate and lay it on a sheet of paper. So to do that, I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard. So let's go edit and copy and copy the top of this gate and then go to the paper space area here and do an edit paste and just drop this sucker right in there. So I'm going to go right here and get it like so. Okay? And so when I go to print this, I go to plot. It's going to look like this. What I can do also is go in here and erase some of these dimension lines here. I can go in and create some viewports. So I'm just cutting a hole in the sheet of paper and do the overall view of the gate here, do another viewport for the cut list. So I click on here and blow this up and do a zoom window, get exactly what I want. Blow that gate up there and then go here and blow up the cut list. Now, you remember now, this is a large sheet of paper so these Drawings look like they may be small, but when you actually print them out, they'll be they'll be very legible. So then, uh, so if I go back and plot preview, there it is. And when you blow, you can see that it's legible. It'll be legible when you print it out full size. And then just send it off and create a file. And if I don't have a plotter, I just create a PDF, or if I do have a plotter, then I would send it to the plotter and print it out that way. So if you have a job and they require you to draw the elevations and details to certain scales, we can show you how to set different scales on the same sheet. So I'm going to go to this drawing here. And so this is basically a railing that's been drawn on the model screen. I'm going to go to the D size sheet here. And I'm going to put a viewport in here for the to show the railing. Okay, so then I'm going to double click on this and blow this up. And say we want to make this at a, at a scale of 1 equals 12. Well, go to go to paper space and I click on the viewport. Now I can go over here and do it this way. I don't see it preview as I'm going over these scales. If I go to the properties box and go down here to the scale here. As I go down, you see how it varies. That's one inch. That's inch and a half. So let's say, well, let's go to a little bit too. So we'll say inch and a half equals twelve. So I'll click that. So that is zoomed up to inch and a half equals 12. So to make sure I don't lose that, I lock that viewport right here where it says select the viewport so I'll we'll lock it. If I'm in model space and I zoom in by mistake it won't screw up the scale. Then I'm going to create another viewport for say the section. And I zoom that up. And say I want to make it the same scale as that. I can use the match property. So I go back to paper space because the viewports are in paper space, and I match. I want to make this this the same scale as that. So I click on that. Now that's the same scale as this. 
and I can go in and I can use the pan command here and center it where I want. First of all, I need to get into model space. Double click on the viewport. Pan it where I want. And then exit out of there. Now, I'll, you, know, you may decide, well, for the section, I want to make that bigger. So let's go back to let's go back to the paper and click on this piece. Oh, you got to make sure you don't have it locked. Okay, I don't. So we click on this piece here, and we'll go to the scale. So instead of inch and a half, let's try three equals one. All right. Okay, that's what it is now. And I'm going to lock the viewport. Okay, so now to get the whole thing to show, I'm going to move it down. And in paper, I can make the viewport bigger to get the rest of the section showing here. Okay, this is an inch and a half equals one. This is three equals a foot. And then I can do another viewport here and make this say I want to make so I double click on this and I'll blow this up. And I want to do the top piece and let me go back to paper click on this viewport and let's change that to let's see what we can do half size six equals a foot okay and lock that and then size the viewport so I get the area covered that I want Like so. I could then copy this viewport, the scale is the same, I can go in here and double click on this. Now it's locked, what I want to do, I'm going to pan down to the bottom to create a bottom one. So I go in here and I use, I don't use, if I use the wheel I'll have a chance of I'll, it'll cause me to zoom in or out. I don't want that, I want to go straight pan. So. I'll just use this and I'll just pan this thing up until I get to the bottom. And I've got my bottom detail right there. I exit. I lock the viewport. And I'm all set to go. Then I move them around. And now, what I can do, I can dimension this in paper space. So I just I have a dimension style called paper, so I just go in here and just do the fly out and pick paper space. And one reason for doing this is when I, this is one scale here. And so this is, we'll take this over to the end. And this is being a different scale, but it'll still the text will be the same. So I do a linear dimension, say from here to there. It's two and a quarter. You notice they're the same size. I go over here and do a linear from the top here to the floor. But you notice the text, all the texts are the same size, no matter what the scale of the viewport is. Now, if I'm making up a demonstration drawing, say for instance to show a customer different styles of gates, I can go in here. I don't necessarily have to make it all a specific scale, but I want them all to look the same. And I'm going to create a rectangular viewport, and I'm going to pick four. I'm going to do four viewports in this like so. Alright, so I go over here and I get this one in place. Go here. Put this one in here. Go here. 
get this one here and go here I guess it's this one here yeah okay so I like the looks of this so I go back to paper and I use the match property so I want so I like this look and I match it to this one which changes and that one which changes and this one here okay I'll go back here and go pan click on the model here and pan this down to get the whole gate inside and now I have everything looking the same as far as scale so the customer can compare the different styles of gates now when doing presentation or shop drawings Every once in a while, wipeouts can come in real handy, particularly when you have dimensions over top of a fabrication and you're having a hard time reading them. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. We'll go back to the uh, to this drawing here. And let's just say that I go over here and I put a linear dimension for this right here. And I want to leave the dimension where it is, but you notice that there's lines behind here and it's... Uh, you know, it's hard to see what that looks like. So there's a command here. It's called Wipeout. Well, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to draw a rectangle where I want this wipeout to go. I basically want to block out this area right here. So then I go to Draw and Wipeout, and I have a choice. I can either do my own wipeout or pick a polyline. So I'm going to do that and pick this. Erase the polyline. Well, we can do that too. Okay, so there's the wipeout. Now, the problem is now, of course, the dimension is there, but you can't see it. So we go to the layout tools and we use this command here called bring to front. And we bring the dimension to the front. So the dimension is here. It's clear. The wipeout has wiped out the area behind where the picket is so that you can see what's going on. You can do a freehand wipeout too. I just go in here and wipe out part of the screen. It doesn't erase anything. It's a visual tool. Okay, so I go in here. There it is. That's your wipeout. Very neat little tool. Comes in real handy. I'm surprised a lot of people don't use it that much. So if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to call the number on the screen or email us, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.